hi, I just want to talk to you today about estate planning. And in order to do that, I brought in Greg Gentry. He is an attorney with Randall Gentry and Pike. And you know, I met these guys through a mutual colleague and she, in the industry, we have a hard time finding good estate planners and estate planners that really know what they're doing. And I've learned enough about estate planning to really know that you need to have your ducks in a row because we don't want to end up going through probate. We don't want to end up with a, a messed up estate, but yet we paid in advance to have all that done. And then we find out it's not done. And I was talking to a farmer a few weeks ago and he brought up to me that he was trying to find an estate planner that was not an attorney. And it was really a comical situation because he was talking to me and he didn't know I was a life insurance agent, even though he read my book, he missed the whole point that I was a life insurance agent. So he said, well, I don't trust you anymore. I mean, now you have to prove to me that you're a good person. And I, and I, so after I got off of that call, I reached out to Greg and said, why would somebody use an estate planner that's not an attorney? I get that we don't want to pay these astronomical costs, but I didn't know if there were still legal documents that needed to go through an attorney. Maybe we can bypass the attorney. Like I have this relationship with Greg and his firm. Why would I be sending people there if we don't need them? And so I had a legitimate question and Greg came back and he had some great answers. And so I just wanted to make sure that we got that information to you so that you know when you're doing estate planning, why, why do you want an attorney? Why don't you want an attorney? You know, is there something that one can provide that the other can't provide? So I would just like to welcome Greg, who is, um, he looks very young. I mean, obviously you can see him. <laughs> But he is so full of knowledge and he loves to share it. So I am, I'm so happy that we made the connection, Greg. And welcome and thank you for being on our little conference call today. Well, thanks so much, Mary Jo. Mary jo. I'm really excited to be here. I'm uh, really excited to talk about estate planning and particularly why you're going to want an attorney on your team. And it really is a team. And I want to stress that it's not just the attorney, not just the financial professional, not just the tax professional. We really do uh, want to make sure uh, that we have a coordinated effort to get that estate plan really working. And uh, one of the first things I wanted to mention is, uh, Mary Jo, it's interesting that that uh, particular individual started to distrust you because you were uh, an insurance agent because we run into the same thing with our industry as attorneys. I mean, I, uh, I, I joke with people all the time that I, I like to hide my fins, you know, because all the attorneys are sharks and everything. But um, uh, yeah, we, we do have a very common uh, negative perception and it's really just not true for all attorneys. Uh, there are some attorneys out there that you're absolutely not going to want to work with because either it's a lack of ex or, excuse me, experience in that area uh, or a personality that just doesn't jive with you or a strategy that doesn't fit with your overall financial plan. So you really wanna be picky when it comes to the particular attorney you work with, but um, it is really critical if you find that right attorney, they can provide a lot of extra insights that you wouldn't necessarily be able to have on your own for structuring that estate plan. So why, so let's answer, let's answer this guy's question. Why would I want an attorney over a non-attorney estate planner? So to understand the reason why you would want an attorney, you have to look at what some of the alternatives to having an attorney are. So uh, a couple of uh, alternatives that come off the, my mind right now, one is a non-attorney who uh, is kind of practicing in the area of estate planning, skirts the line between giving legal advice and not giving legal advice, but kind of says, you know, here's a plan. Uh, usually it involves beneficiary designations or, hey, you might want to get a will and maybe put this in there or that in there and, and structures this, this plan, but doesn't implement any of it and says, okay, so here's going to be my fee for telling you what you need to do, what kind of documents you need to get, what sort of titles you need to put on things. And then I'm going to refer you to someone else to do it. But here's my value proposition. 
So those attorneys over there are going to charge you a lot of money to counsel you through these issues, but I'm not an attorney, so I'm going to uh, charge a lower fee. But you can take this already pre-prepared plan, hand it over to the attorney, and then your fee will be much, much lower. So we see this a lot with, uh, I would say, the typical financial advisor will try to do some of this activity. Other mm -hmm. people will call themselves estate planning um, con consultation uh, advisors or uh, particular asset specialists, estate planning specialists. That's kind of the work that they'll do. But at the end of the day, they're not really putting together any sort of legal documentation. They're saying we're going to make the attorney's job less expensive. That and can be really so, so they still need the legal documentation. Correct. So they'll is need it, something. Is it, if they still need the legal documentation, we just prepared a little. Do you see that it's actually saving them money or is it costing them more money because they didn't prepare things right and you're having to go back and fix something or just start all over? So the issue with having someone else do this sort of preparatory work is that they usually are more focused on what we would call the tax oriented uh, uh, counseling. So they're looking just at what your tax burden is going to be, but they're not looking at the overall picture of the planning or, or of, the, of the family of the goals. So instead of, they'll miss out on things like the personal protections that particular planning can get, asset protection, creditor protection, divorce protection, remarriage protection, things that are more in the legal sphere uh, than would necessarily be uh, on the mind of one of these estate planning um, consultants. Uh, okay. Other things, other things that can be problems are, uh, so you, you relegate the attorney to a position of essentially a document preparer. They're uh, not going to be following up with any of the other areas of the planning. So for example, making sure the funding is coordinated. They're just gonna be preparing the documents based on that consultant's uh, direction, and they're not going to be doing any follow-up. Updating the plan, it's probably going to be a little bit more of a transactional um, relationship in that sort of deal. So you prepare the will typically, uh, have that signed and then you're done. But over the years, as new assets are acquired or new family situations change, that attorney is going to be outside of the picture. So again, like I mentioned, you wanna have the right sort of attorney, someone that's going to really wanna form a long-term relationship with you to make sure things are ready to go at any point in time, not just a one and done deal. So let's say that I go to this non-attorney Mm -hmm. And, um, or let's say that my parents go to this non-attorney, they pass away and I then have to deal with the estate. Right. So now we've got some legal issues with the estate. Do I go back to the estate planner and then he goes to the attorney or do I go directly to the attorney? It, if I have to, I mean, I can only imagine if I have to go to the estate planner and then he goes to the attorney and then the attorney comes back and tells him and then he tells me we have some we might have some lost dialogue or some misunderstandings along the way that could severely hold up any kind of transfer of land or property or equipment or anything right right and usually that estate planning consultant is out of the picture once the person has died they don't deal with any of that so if they so weren't going to go back, come to the attorney anyway. You would be going to the attorney anyway because the attorney is going to have to be the person that, let's say if it's a will, contacts the court, uh, spreads the will of record, creates the deeds to transfer the property, contacts the financial institutions with letters from the court. All of that has to go through the attorney anyway. And the problem uh, with having the attorney not involved throughout the planning during the lifetime of the client is now they're thrown into an arena that they know nothing of. So they haven't been in contact with the family. They know nothing about the assets. They know nothing about the family dynamics. And that's really what the problem with probate is. I'm not gonna say probate is evil because it's, it's not. I mean, it's just a process to transfer assets and there's no reason that it should be much, much more expensive. Except the reason it generally is, is because of a lack of organization on the family members and an attorney who's never been involved. 
if you don't, if the attorney doesn't know any of that information, they got to put their Sherlock Holmes hat and run around and find everything you've done throughout your entire life. And so that's why it's a great idea to have an attorney involved in the beginning, because if I don't have to do that hunting, it's going to lower the cost of that plan. It's going to lower the time that it takes. The assets are going to get transferred quicker and with less expense and less headaches. And I, I mean, I just can't even imagine it would, you don't know the family, but now you have to deal with the whole family and you don't know the dynamics of that family because you never worked with mom and dad that said, Hey, little Susie over here isn't involved in farming. And, and, you know, she's already throwing a fit because she wants the money. Um, and, and we already are having difficulty with her and we're alive. So right. upon her death, it might be a concern that, you know, one of the children is going to cause some issues and these are the ones you should be concerned about or the one or, or maybe everybody gets along and that's great. Um, and but who's in charge and what experience do they have and wow. Right, exactly. And you're, and you're jumping into, this actually touches on um, a really important issue as well making sure that the kids are trained and they know about the plan. They know during, uh, if, when the client dies, they know what to do, how to do it, and how to pay for it. It's absolutely critical because if that doesn't happen, like you said, there's all of these underlying issues that all kind of come uh, to the surface when people are dealing with the grieving period. And now they're coming to this attorney, this person they don't know, they don't necessarily trust, and he's spewing out all this legal language to uh, him or her. And it's during that period when the, the human brain just doesn't take in information very well. We're in pain. We're in the grieving period. So we just kind of shut down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So if we can get ahead of those issues proactively, we think our experiences, things go a lot smoother. That that I, I didn't even know that this is exciting <laughs> i don't even like legal stuff i know this is exciting to you but <laughs> this is exciting to to really understand like why would you want to put that third party in there when that third party just falls by the wayside later like they're not even there for the most important part which is the transfer of assets and to make sure that everything gets done um and, and to save money, so maybe you saved a little money while you're alive, but it, it's costing your estate a lot more money upon your death because we don't have that relationship. And that's I, also something that people just don't look at. When we're thinking about the cost of an estate plan, we really need to th think about three separate costs. So there's the cost of the documents, and we think of that as kind of the what will it, what will it cost for it? What do you charge for a will or for a trust or for a power of attorney? And that's just one aspect of the cost. But for most people, they think of that as being the entire thing. Well, there's two other costs. The, the first is the cost of updating or failing to update. So in the traditional industry, the more transactional estate planners, they'll create your initial estate plan. They'll go away. And then when the family wants to come back to do an update, well, then that'll be a separate charge. So in our practice, we don't do that. We want to be in front of them all the time and have a formal maintenance and education program so that the documents are updated on a formal basis. Um, but that does have its costs as well. We do have a low annual fee for that service. So those, that's the cost of updating, but there's also cost of failing to update, whether that's a financial cost if the plan isn't uh, uh, adequately prepared for a particular tax change, but also a non-financial cost. So think of the cost of a living will, that pull the plug document. If that doesn't accurately reflect your wishes, I mean, that, that cost is massive on the family. So huge non-financial cost there. So those are the first two. And the third cost is that transfer of assets. And you hit it right on the head, Mary Jo, that that is where the big lump of the cost is. That, that design, that front end fee, that is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to a, an estate plan. The big, big fees are at the back end. So uh, we've done studies in the national network across the country asking what are really the costs of probate. And we find that it's between two and 3% of the gross estate, everything you've ever owned between two and 3%. If we can get ahead of that, if we can proactively position the family 
in a position where it, it, you, we don't have to go through all those hurdles. We don't have to find everything you own throughout the rest of your life. We have trustees that are educated. We can lower that and we can lower it substantially. So even if you have a higher front end, you can have such a massively lowered back end that overall you're stretching those costs out and saving money, but you have a plan that's ready to go at any point in time. That, that, I have to tell you, that was the most, and I think you you probably know this one. We, we visited a couple of times just to understand what you guys are doing over there. And the most exciting thing for me was the education of the trustees. So like, no, I don't, you don't hear that from attorneys. I mean, besides the fact that I'm excited that you guys work with everybody. Um, at, you know, it's, it's a big thing at your firm that you don't just, oh, hey, let's just bring you in as the farmer. And, you know, when your kids, when, when you die, your kids will hear about all this. It's a matter of, hey, we want that trustee in here. And we want to continually educate that trustee. So upon your death, we know your trustee knows what's going to happen because that's the worst time to be training a trustee is upon your death. Absolutely. Um, and, and granted, you know, you bring, you bring the life insurance agent in, you bring the financial advisor in, the accountant, you guys want everybody in that meeting, which is phenomenal. But again, I was so excited because like I train my clients, continually training my clients to understand what they have and hoping that they train their kids and that we can get the whole family involved. You guys are doing that very same thing. And I have a client right now that's going through estate planning and it has been a nightmare to even get me into the same room. And, and I get there and then they try to tear me apart. And, and you know, it's, I'm like, this, this is harder than it needs to be. The estate planner is not including me. And I'm like, really? <laughs> this is crazy. There are people that are doing it right. And just like there are bad life, and I'm going to call them bad life insurance agents. Um, just like they're uneducated life insurance agents. And, and they're just out there to sell some policies and make some commission. There are also attorneys out there just to make some money, go home at night, and they don't care about what happens at the end of the day. You guys are so very different than that. And it is so refreshing to see that, and you're a small firm, right? You don't have like 25 employees. Oh no, not at all. No, very small. We, we are only a three attorney firm here in Indianapolis. Uh, and it's really kind of funny. We've got this little itty bitty office. We're the central, Kind of, ex we, we call ourselves the lab for the National Network of Estate Planning Attorneys. Since Rick, he owns that uh, organization, and everything that goes on in the National Network, we're the guinea pigs for. So we get to experience it head on right at the beginning. So it's really pretty cool. But um, you you touched on something that is a major issue for people working with attorneys. So we talked about what the costs are, but what else? What is another reason that people don't want to work with attorneys? because we're know-it-alls. We, we are intentionally intimidating. We talk over people's heads. We're not team players. We're awful to get along with. I, I tell you, the, the vast majority of attorneys are not uh, the most pleasant folks to deal with. And the problem with attorneys is it's only people that are this educated that could be this stupid. You know, we don't know everything about everything. I don't know everything about life insurance. Mary Jo has tons to teach me about this subject. I don't, I don't even I can't even begin. Um, but the attorneys, most of the time, they'll come in and they'll they're highfalutin and here's uh, you know I'm going to be speaking to you in Latin and all these terms that uh, don't make any sense to anyone, a bunch of legal jargon, and so it can be difficult working with those folks. So you want to find someone that can talk to you, communicate effectively, and then be able to translate that information that you're exchanging back and forth into an effective plan for you that meets your your goals and your family's goals. And help explain it. That is so, it's so exciting to me. Help explain it to those people that don't, the family members that don't understand and make them comfortable to ask those questions. Because you're right, you walk into, and, and I'm not scared to ask questions anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. but not everybody's like that. You know, I will, I will very aggressively put people in their spot when they start using language I don't know. I'm like, why are you, what? 
that isn't even a common word. What does that mean? Like my vocabulary is this big and none of it is fancy words. Due diligence is probably my <laughs> the fanciest word in my vocabulary. So let's bring it down to where people can understand it and they feel comfortable. This is not a subject anybody wants to talk about anyway. No. And so no. why make it any harder than it needs to be? Now, while, while you're at a cocktail party, you don't invite your uh, friends to talk about their estate planning adventures. It's just not something that's really fun. We're talking about death. We're talking about disability. We're talking about taxes. None of these are really fun, exciting topics for people to confront. And so what we like to do in our practice, and it's a strategy that's worked out pretty well, is when we're talking about these subjects, we'll tell, we'll tell stories. So if I'm trying to explain um, estate taxation, I'm talking about what happens at the first death with this trust and that trust, I'll talk about the IRS supermarket. I'm not going to say, well, you know, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, you have a credit shelter AB trust. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. So I'll say at the first death, what we want to do is make sure that uh, husband, because the husband always dies first, that he can go into the IRS supermarket and check out with his estate tax coupon, put it all out in the parking lot, have that never be taxed again, so that we get double coupon days at the IRS supermarket. Now, this is a very abbreviated version of that story, but the, the point is we're not the goal is not to make yourself sound smart. It's to communicate. And that's right. what we're trying to do. Yeah. And that is why I'm so excited to have really teamed up with you guys. And, you know, we have, so, we're getting to the point where we have so many farmers and ranchers that are reaching out and saying, do you have somebody for estate planning? Do you have somebody for farm mediating? Do you have somebody for taxes? Do you, and we're creating that circle of people. And we are not creating that circle of people just based on, oh, hey, you know, we've got somebody and we met them once. We're creating that circle of people based on the fact that we know and trust them. And, and they are, they do business like I do business and they genuinely want to help these people. Um, now you guys don't do, you know, you don't work with a ton of farmers at the moment. <laughs> right, right. You get you change that and you'll become farm experts as well. But you do have the contact. You do have the, the farm estate planner that you can contact. So, you know, I just encourage you, encourage everybody. If you are look, if you want more information, um, I forgot to put your website on there, but it's lifespan. USA. Uh, lifespanusa.com right yes that's correct okay and it's all one word l-i-f-e-s-p-a-n-u-s-a.com okay um let me see i just have one more question what oh, i have two questions what is an estate planning best practice and does everyone need to be in the first estate planning meeting, meaning the whole family? So I'm going to touch on the second one first because the answer is very clear. Um, we want, um, and it depends on the family, we absolutely, if it's a married couple, want both uh, spouses to be there because we don't want the message to get muddled and we don't want one person to be super involved and then the other one to feel like an afterthought. So we want definitely the married couple to be there smack dab at the beginning while we're creating the plan. Now, as far as the rest of the extended family involvement, that's kind of a family by family thing. Some people want the kids in right from the very get-go. Here's the plan, we're gonna create it together as a family. That is totally perfectly fine. Some folks are a little bit more reserved at the beginning and don't wanna pull in the kids, for example, until they at least have a first good shot at it. You know, We got it down on pen and paper and now we're going to explain this to the kids and ask, do you have any questions? And that also works out well. Now, what I wanna say does not work well is where the, uh, the married couple will create a plan and they will never involve the kids whatsoever. They don't see the plan, they don't know what their role is, they don't know what the, uh, when to contact or how to contact the law firm. That doesn't make any sense. But okay. either one of the first two, totally, totally perfectly fine. Okay, and then the other question was, um, let me grab it here again. What is, the, what is the best practice for estate planning? Is there a best practice? 
So the best practice, I would say, um, in our opinion, is the type of strategy that we do, the three-step strategy. It involves first uh, creating a plan, and we call it, call it co-creating because there's two experts in the room. You're the expert on the family. We're the expert on the law. Can't say expert, but we know about the law. You know about the family. So we're going to make a, a plan uh, that, that's co-created with those two systems. And we're going to do that with your entire professional team. On the, so that's step one. Step two is making sure that on a formal basis, we update the plan for changes in the family and changes in the law and keeping up to date with the funding. So that's kind of the maintenance step two part. And then the third step is making sure that we have all the expectations there for the settlement. And the settlement is the transfer of the assets after death. So we have a pre-negotiated settlement arrangement. So if the kids use us, they know exactly what they're getting into, what the services are, what the turnaround times are, what the fees are gonna be, everything is completely transparent. And then we're also situated to keep that inherited vehicle, the inherited trust up to date, even after the death or disability of the original client. So that's, um, that's what we think the best practice is for estate planning. And most people don't follow that. Typically, the um, I would say the Mark Twain attorney. So Mark Twain said he never met an attorney that wouldn't do a will. That type of person will create a document which may be fantastic. It may be a great legal document, but unfortunately, our industry does not keep up to date uh, with changes. It's very transactional. So our, our opinion, best practice is to pursue that three-step strategy, but not going to find that with the industry at large. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. The Mark Twain attorney. That's like, that's like saying the financial advisor is the life insurance agent and the financial advisor and the accountant. And <laughs> it's very, it's just, everybody tries to cross that field. And so it's fun to me. It, it's just, it's going to be so fun working with you guys. I'm so excited about it. Oh, we're, we're really excited to be working with you too, Mary Jo. And very excited to, um, hey. uh, meet you in person over in uh, uh, November. That'll be really exciting. No, 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 in August. August, August, August. okay. I'm there in a month, yep. Oh, so I, I, exactly, you will be here in a month. I'm sorry about that. No, well, it's, yeah, in a couple a couple weeks. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about it. It'll be fun to hang out and, and get to meet you in person and, and really get to talk about, like, and see what you guys do. Um, and. And just to even experience it, you know, just to experience it myself and be able to tell my clients, this is exactly, you know, this is what they do. I've been through it. I know it rather than just say, oh, okay, well, you know, we've not, I've, I've not met them, but <laughs> they seem to be really nice people. <laughs> right, right. And, and what, when, when we're meeting with most people nowadays, it's online just like this. Mm -hmm. And we can form a really you know, tight relationship with the family, having never even met anyone face-to-face uh, -face other than online. So technology has really kind of changed our industry so, so, so much. Because you're working with people all over the country like I am, right? Exactly, exactly. We're working all over the country. We team up with one of our national network contacts just to make sure that we're up to snuff on the... Uh, state-specific law, um, but um, yes, we're working all across the country, both for new clients and for the beneficiaries, because you never know where the kids are going to end up, uh, where they're going to spread out, so we need to be prepared to do that as well. And that's exciting, because it's, you know, it is, you're right, it's just the way technology is going today, but, you know, I have clients in 26 states. I have not met the majority of those clients. I, I don't fly around the world just like you don't. So, you know, we have to, and we still have really good relationships with them. Um, as long as you have a webcam, we can do business. Exactly. We can share screens, but it's nice to get that, it's nice to get that contact interaction. But, okay, so I don't, you know, just in a quick review, I mean, we've, we've kind of given everybody a lot of information and hopefully we can do a couple more of these and dive into a couple more subjects as well. But because estate planning is a big, big subject. Oh, um, absolutely. But I, I'm very excited that you will be at our farm finance conference in February as well. You will be in Bismarck in November to mm -hmm. talk to us at the Secure Wealth Builders Conference. And so 
you know, it's, it's, it's just, I'm just, I'm just excited. But so we'll get more, <laughs> we'll get more information on estate planning out later and, and through other topics that come up. But at the end of the day, now we've got the answer to the question, why do we have, you know, do we want the estate planner that's not an attorney? And, you know, we can't say that Greg is an expert, but you want somebody that, that eats, sleeps, and breathes what you're trying to do, and you want somebody that understands the estate planning. We don't want the Mark Twain planning a $5 million estate. We want to make sure that that is planned correctly. I don't care if it's a half a million dollar estate. You don't want to lose 2 to 3% of, of what you worked so hard to build. Let's make sure that we do it right and that everybody knows what's going on and we involve the family so that that might alleviate some of the pain later and the disconnect of families. Um, so again, if you need to get a hold of Greg, go to lifespanusa.com, right? Correct. Okay, awesome. Thank you for your time today. Oh, well, um, thank you for having me, Mary Jo. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you in a couple weeks. Yep, see you in a couple weeks. It'll be exciting. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you.